Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Gungnir! Today, we are, we are at the Gate of Lament, and we gotta defeat Pierre! And alright, I got the chest I wanted, too! I had to reload my save file to get back up to here, so... Now, anyway, we, now we have multiple characters we can use as a potential ace. You see in the lower right where it says delay after movement? Well, that basically means that... Uh, well, whenever you move a character or have a character take a turn, your initial delay is always going to be three, unless it's uh, you have an ace who reduces that delay for other party members. In this case, the brute and the thrower that I have, and Julio. That basically means you'll get your turns faster. It's not critical, so if that's too confusing, well, don't worry about it, but... It is nice, so that's why I want to use Julio as my ace and not Ragnus there. So let's put you up front there. Awesome. Okay, now let's see. I'm going to put my Brute here because what I want to do is I want to open this chest and I want the Brute to be able to boost my attack with the power guns, at least for the first hit. I'm going to have Ragnus go up here because he's basically going to be my tank for the battle. So when we get when these guys come after us, I want him to be uh, taking most of the beating there. Well, let's see what else do we got. Let's see. I want to put Paulo there. Keep him in the back. He's basically our uh, red mage or sage type character, as some people were pointing out there. But okay, so that's how I want to set up my party. Um, game. Thank you. Oh, yeah! Now, one thing you could do in this battle, the only person you actually have to kill is Pierre. You could have Paulo use a spell and hit those three knights and Pierre at the same time, but then you, they would, uh, well, gang up on you. And I don't want to do that right now. Okay, so, first things first. Well, we got some base points that I want to get eventually. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. Now, the assassins, they have Tiring Beat, which, as you can see there, means that they can put you to sleep. That can be pretty annoying to have to deal with. That's one reason why I want to put Ragdus up front, so that way he can get inflicted with that, while the other party members I've got can do other things. So let's see, nothing too special about the Trickster there. Oh yeah, this is our first battle where we have siege weapons. You have a catapult here, and the Trickster job class is the only generic unit that can operate that. So basically what will happen is, when if there's no other enemies like around this area here, that means that they'll use the catapult and hit for massive damage around anyone who's in the area. So you want to watch out for that. Don't move too far forward in this battle, essentially, is what that means. So, let's see. First thing, let's... Uh, get uh, that going. Hmm. I would like to be able to deal more damage. Maybe I should just uh, get some base points first. Let's see. Yeah, why don't you go there, Ragnus? Let's do that. Now, in this battle, I want Julio and my uh, brute there, Joseph, to uh, take as many actions as they can because, well, Julio, I'm going to get a new weapon for him in just a moment. And Joseph, I want him to work on the battle axe because I think it's 25 mastery. You can unlock armor crush, which is really good. Basically, it breaks their armor, drastically reducing their defense. And it's not that, or well, it's not that weak either. It's a pretty good uh, weapon in general. So I really like that. That's what brutes do. They break equipment. So let's see. Uh, can I get you over there, Mark? Yes, I can. All right. Let's grab that one. Now, basically, at this point, the three knights and Pierre are just going to sit back there because they don't want to walk into an ambush of your own. So, at first, we're mostly going to be dealing with the trickster and uh, the assassins. Okay, now we've gotten most of the base points that I can early on, so let's see. Yeah, it's a little better on the damage there. Boost up with the power gaunts, and we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, unfortunately, the Vantage, or Vantage, or however you pronounce it, uh, yeah, that, that hand armor doesn't have any, uh, what is it, 
uh, boost attached to it. So, oh well. It's mostly there just for the defense. Let's see. Can Julio, can you, uh, whoop, no. Let's see. Can I kill that chest? No, I can't. Oh well. Okay, well then I'll just have you, uh, smash the chest and we'll do what we can. I also want Joseph to get that base point in the lower right there. Yeah, that trickster, she's just going to be uh, sitting up there for a while. Or he, or I don't know, it's a generic unit. I don't think it matters what gender they are. But anyway, okay, so let's see. Joseph, you're still kind of stuck there. Ragnus, why don't you go up here? And uh, just let them wail on you. But yeah, Ragnus has the bronze sword, but there's no new abilities to learn for it. So I don't think I really need to uh, work on that there. Well, I got lucky they didn't uh, inflict sleep on him. So let's see. Okay. Hmm. Okay, yeah, let's have you finish off that chest, break it open, and then we can get some treasure. And it's a really, really good piece of, uh, well, a weapon, you'll see. And if you don't get it now, you're not going to be able to otherwise buy it for several battles. It is really good. You could practically keep it the whole game if you really want it to. Okay, so let's see. Let's put, let's grab that bag there. See what we get for our prize. The Rainy Saber. And it's uh, basically a water elemental sword, and it's really nice. Nuts. Okay. But, oh, yeah, one thing that's kind of strange about the sleep status, you actually regenerate HP over time with it, which I suppose kind of makes sense, but, well, anyway. Okay, let's see. Why don't you move? Hmm. Yeah, why don't, no, no, wait, I want the uh, thrower to move. Right. Um, okay, yeah, let's just put you there for now. Basically, what I want to do now, go on to the base point with Julio, now that I have the Rainy Saber there, and we can change our equipment. Cost two tactics points, it's totally worth it. So, let's see, we got the Rainy Saber, and I want to give that to you, because not only is it stronger, but the Specialty 3 ability for it can inflict knockback, and that is really good in this game. Basically, anything that can do knockback is very nice. So, equip that, boom, we can move on with the battle. Okay, let's see, let's uh, move you there, get that one base point. Yeah, don't worry about the trickster up there. We're not going to be able to do much with that guy for a while anyway. Let's see, okay, you're still asleep, so I can't do a beat with you. So, let's see, we got you there, so let's put you there, and then I can perform a beat. Or... See, you're not going to get your turn for a while. So let's move you there. That way I can do a boost and beat, I think. So let's see. Oh, yeah. One of the nice things about the uh, Rainy Saber also is that the Specialty 1 ability can initiate beats. So you get beat initiation and knockback. And that's really nice. As far as elemental affinities go, I don't think it's really that big a deal. You can see there, like if you're in water there or standing in water... It would boost water elemental damage, but as far as I've seen, it's really negligible. So, I don't really worry about that too much. But anyway, okay, so, we got boost and beat is... No, that's not enough. But I'll just go for whatever I can. Now, since the assassin there is facing away from me, she can't guard my attack there. And we get a little specialty experience, too. Awesome. See if I can't get Joseph in on the action, too. Maybe initiate a beat there, too, with the uh, battle axe there. We're going to be keeping the battle axe the whole game. Armor break, or armor crush, is so good in this game. Okay, so, let's see. Joseph? Nah, I can't move close enough. Hmm... And you're still asleep. I basically want to kill the assassins first because I don't want them putting me to sleep forever. So, okay. Well, let's move over there and see how well that works. Let's see. Okay, so now, if I use no beats, I might be... In fact, I probably should be able to kill her. But if I don't, for some reason, I can initiate a beat 
on the go. Or impromptu. So we'll see how that works. Okay, we dealt enough damage. Just let that run out then. Don't need to spend more tactics points than I have to. Ha uh ha. -huh. I would like to get one of those wildcat claws if I can. If I can't, well, I'm not going to worry about it too much. So let's just go there. Grab some goods. And see what else we can do. I'd like to get that base point, too, behind the assassin there. But I want to be careful because I don't want the trickster up there to hit me with the uh, catapult there. Oh, and by the way, Paulo can actually use those catapults, too. He's one of the two storyline characters who can use them. I don't really use them that much, though, because I'd rather, like, work on developing, or developing my weapons. But whatever works. Okay, so we got that. Got a little boost there. Hmm. Let me see. Can I get my thrower there? Yes. Okay, let's do that first. And then I'll have, uh... Yeah, Julio. Get going on that. Can't get behind her. I can't move that far. But, oh well. We got double beat action going. That'll work just fine. By the way, with beats and boots, uh, as far as the order in which everything is done with that, it, whoever's closer to the target will have first priority. You can't just rearrange the order in which you're going to do your beats and boosts, unfortunately, but oh well. Okay, phew. Uh, Ragnus, are you gonna wake up and uh, lead this revolution here? You're just gonna sit on your ass the whole time. Okay, let's see. I still can't get to her with the fruits there. Oh, sleep just wore off. About time. Okay, I want to get some um, weapon mastery for Joseph there. So let's start with this. See if I can do it. If not, well, oh well. Let's see. Yep. Oh, yeah. I definitely need a, another beat to finish her. Finish her. Now, uh, Paulo here. I actually am probably going to use him more for healing rather than actually attacking. Let's see, do any of us need some healing? You could, a little. Wow, uh, Ragnus must have recovered all of his HP from sleeping for so long. Okay, um, let's see. Let's have you go up, up to about here. Now, there's three kinds of uh, healing abilities in the game. Right now, we only have the specialty two healing, which basically means uh, single targeted healing uh, that you can give to someone from range. So, that's pretty nice. So, let's heal up uh, Julio there. Now, you have to have a line of sight with the target to work. So, yeah, it's not like magic where you can hit someone from the other side of the screen. No, no, it doesn't work that way. Not with the specialty two ones, anyway. Okay, how are we doing here? Okay, Ragnus, why don't you uh, grab that item there? See if I can get the Wildcat... Or a Savage Hunter. That's a really good piece of hand armor. But we don't get to buy it for quite some time. So I'm just going to hold on to that for later. Okay. You can go there. Grab that. Now we got maximum tactics points. Or, well, the maximum... Uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, bases that we can get for the tactics points. Awesome. Another thing you can do with beats is that you can kind of manipulate what direction the enemies are facing towards you with that. Not worth worrying about, but it's an option. Okay, let's see. Julio, unfortunately I can only attack you from the front. Well, you don't have too much guard anyway, so. Alright, got her. And get some more specialty. Awesome. And by the way, with uh, healing, the two other kinds of specialties for healing are uh, specialty one, which means... Actually, let's put you over here. A specialty one is a single targeted healing where you have to be adjacent to the target, but it has the highest uh, healing percentage. And then there's specialty three, which you can heal from range, but you can heal multiple targets with it. So... But you also get the least healing from that one, too. But it depends. 
by the way, healing is always based on a percentage of the target's max HP. Just something to keep in mind there. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Now, I could go up here and try to take out the trickster there. But I don't want to do that right now because we get hit too much by the catapults. So I'm going to wait for the knights to come to me to do that. So let's see. Let's see if I can't uh, get this guy's attention. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, use my bamboo pick there. You see in the middle of the left there where it says uh, the range and then there's uh, the target. You can hit an enemy from up to eight tiles away. You see L8, that means uh, line eight tiles away. But the best accuracy you're going to get is if you're four tiles away. If you're too close to them, they'll see it coming and they'll dodge. If you're too far away, your accuracy won't work too, too well. So you want to hit the sweet spot. In this case, that's four tiles away. So let's just uh, hit you a little bit there. Maybe I can provoke him into jumping down the side of the cliff there and take some fall damage. That would be nice. So yeah, now the knights are going to come after us, but not Pierre yet. Okay, why don't you... Hmm. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to set up my party members here. Get them kind of in formation, so to speak. They don't have any magic users, so I'm not really worried about that. Okay, let's just kind of sit here for a little while then. So basically, just press the X button, and you can move the clock forward a little bit. And let the enemies come to you. So you see how in the lower right there, those turns are uh, moving like that? So that means... Uh, what is it? That means you're just moving the clock along so you can wait for the enemies to come to you. Okay, so let's see. What do you got there? Oh, you've got some pretty good armor there, so we want to watch out for that. Let's see, how are you doing there? You've got Weapon Mastery 4, you got Weapon Mastery 3. So I want uh, Joseph to uh, get in on the action there. So let's see, let's go with just a simple beat there. Now knights are pretty annoying units to have to deal with because they get all the best armor in the game and they can equip shields which have massive guard rigs. In fact, a couple of the knights here have those kind of abilities. Or, I mean, shields, that is. Okay, what can I do? What can I do? Let's see, Julia, why don't you go here? And I don't even need a beat. Hopefully he won't guard it with his sword. That is kind of the thing with uh, swords, one of the nice things about them, is that they have a pretty good guard rate for uh, melee weapons. But, all right, get a little more uh, attack power from the uh, specialty level there. By the way, the uh, boost you get from specialty levels are chosen at random, but they're all pretty good, so not really a big deal. Let's grab some uh, treasure. Can I get the armor? Hey, hey all right. Hard leather is pretty good. So we're doing okay. One of the reasons why they do this transition from day to night is that there's quite a few abilities in the game that can only be used during the daytime or nighttime. So, something to keep in mind there. Let's see, can he hit me from up there? No, I don't think so. So, I'll just uh, stay where I am for now. Let's see, now this knight has the mighty basilisk shield. If you're using a knight, absolutely, absolutely try to win it from him or Pierre. It has, uh, let's see, in the lower right there, 63% guard rate, that's obscene. But that only works against uh, melee attacks, not range attacks. So, just something to keep in mind. But it's still really good, and I think it's the only piece of equipment that can uh, make you immune to poison, which is a pretty common status element in the game. So, but I'm using Julio sort of as my knight for now. So, let's see. Let's just uh, wait for the knights to come to me. Yeah, that is one thing about knights, is that because of all the heavy armor they equip, they get their turns rather slowly oh wow well. let's see can I yeah I could get up there and I don't think he the trickster would risk trying to attack with any other enemies in the way there so 
Let's see, you don't have that massive evasion or guard rate, so I think you'll be fine. Playing it a little risky going after knights like this, but I think we'll be fine. By the way, uh, someone was asking me, H.C. Bailey, when you perform a beat with other characters, does that apply to your weapon mastery or experience? And the answer is no. Only the person who initiated the beat will get experience or anything like that. So, yeah. Oh, well. Just something to keep in mind there. Okay, Joseph, let's, uh... Wait a minute. Did I, uh... Oh, right, I killed that guy. I was like, where'd the other knight go? I forgot. Okay, uh, yeah, good beat. Ought to do pretty well for us. By the way, also, with those uh, shields that they got, once you get the first hit in, if you're using a beat on a knight, uh, every subsequent hit or beat will automatically go through. They don't check against evasion individually. Now, I could kill that knight there. But if I do that, Meredith will probably take the item that he would drop there. So, you know what? Let's just wait. Let's just uh, advance the clock a little bit. Alright, good enough. Let's see. What can I do? Let's see, you only need one more uh, clock tick to take your turn. Oh, man. Now I can't get behind him. Maybe I should have uh, thought about that before. Oh, well. Um, okay, why don't we go there? Yeah, we should be good. He doesn't have a shield, so we'll be fine. There's actually two kinds of shields in the game. There's large shields, like the Basilisk shield there, that... Uh, what is it? Yeah, that, that have massive guard rate, but they also weigh a lot, too. And then there's small shields, which give still pretty decent evasion, or guard rate. But, uh, they also don't, well, yeah, like, they don't give a big boost to your guard rate, but they're still okay. I generally don't like shields, though, because it's kind of an all-or-nothing thing with them. Huh, I didn't expect you to go there. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's move my thrower up here, because I want him to be able to attack that trickster. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make sure you have a unit lined up with the Trickster there. If the Trickster was still over here, you'd probably want to move someone at that spot. But anyway, go here. And let's see, let's go attack the Trickster. Hmm, got a little bit of dodge. I'm a little bit close, but I think we should be good. So let's just go with a beat there. Even though the unit is way high up, it doesn't matter as far as beat. Uh, potential goes. You could also have Paulo use some magic from the uh, Ruby Rod that he has, or Ruby Staff, whatever it's called. Okay, Ruby Staff. Yeah. But I'm not really worried about that. Okay, let's just uh, grab that. Another hard leather? Nah. Oh well. Okay, so I'm gonna pretty much just leave Ragnus and Apollo on standby, while I'm mostly going to be working on killing the trickster there. Actually, you know, if I put Julio there, yeah, I can do a uh, double beat on it. Awesome. Now, once I kill that trickster, let's see, yeah, eventually, I'm going to want to uh, get my thrower out of there. I'm just using the trickster just to get some experience for him. I'm not going to be using the bamboo pick long term, which is also why I didn't, uh... Nuts. Uh, yeah, that's why I didn't have the, uh, thrower do participating more with that. Okay, let's see. What do we got? Let's go there. Awesome. So yeah, I'm going to have to attack those knights from behind, because piercing that guard rate is so difficult. If only there were an item that would let me... Uh, that would... Uh, what was it? Oh yeah, let me break their shields. But actually, I think I got one before, didn't I? 
I forget. I think I won one at random, but decided not to take advantage of it. Okay, let's see. Hmm. You know, I'm not going to bother with a beat that time. We'll just uh, do this the old-fashioned way. One by one. Okay, so let's see. Let's move Julio there, so that way I can line up with the Trickster and continue having my thrower attack her. Okay, four tiles away. Do that. Yeah, two beats ought to get the job done. I still want to keep my tactics points as high as possible. Although, if you have a beat to do, yeah, take advantage of it, of course. Okay, let's see. One more ought to do. Awesome. Get you out of there so that way I can't, or you can't, use the catapult there. There will be oppor other opportunities for me to show off what the catapults do and how they work, but not right now. Now, I can't get up there because, well, they're way too high up there, so, oh well, I can't really do anything with that. Let's see, how are you doing on mastery? Hmm, Julio could use some help. How about... Yeah, you go there. No, no way. Mm, yeah, right there. I don't want my units to stay right next to each other or in a row. Because you just saw Pierre, he hit two of my units there. So, oops. But yeah, Julio could also use some work on the Rainy Saber. Awesome. But yeah, I'm not going to be using the Knight class myself. Julio can pretty much do just as good a job. Okay, wait for it. Now you see, I'm one clock tick behind Pierre there. And my bet is that he's going to try and take the base point and keep me from getting the item at the same time. So what I'm going to do, scramble, cost me four tactics points. Totally worth it. And let's put, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, that was on the base point. I was thinking, wait a minute, it's not on the base point? So let's get the item bag and then recapture the base point. Awesome! Well, the shields will sell for a pretty good penny. Awesome. I'm not extraordinarily worried about that. Okay. Why don't you... Hmm. Piercing his uh, guard rate, because he also has a basilisk shield. That's going to be pretty tough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack him here, and then if he guards it, he'll be facing away from him, and Julio can hit me from behind, or hit him from behind. All right. So yeah, the rest of this should be relatively easy now that I've killed all the rest of the guys. Wow, I'm getting pretty lucky piercing that shield guard rate there. But all right. Okay. Whoop. No, I don't want to do that. Okay. Let's attack you. Get a little more in there. Wow. Nice. There's actually not only an item that can break shields, but there's a status called shieldless, which basically negates any guard rate from shields that you would get. So, that's pretty nice. I'm not going to use anything that has that, but I, I prefer just breaking the shields outright. But, all right, got it. Uh-huh. Loser! But, all right, what is our next move now that we've captured the Gate of Lament? Find out next time on Let's Play Gunger! This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!